Welcome everyone to the Safe Passage thesis presentation of Heather Williams Womack. My name is Dr. Myra Brown Green and I'll be Heather's interviewer for the evening. Welcome, 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 welcome. to all of her friends and family and colleagues and professors who will be her colleagues very, very soon. Um, so I'm gonna give you a, 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 a short bio about who Heather is, and then she'll talk a little bit about herself, and then we'll get back into um, some more information that I'll give, and then she'll show um, some, she'll, she'll give you a, pr a presentation. So, but, but she is so excited. Continue to send her the positive vibes. I know how it is <laughs> when I worked on my thesis many moons ago. I am. So, born in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, and raised in Brooklyn, Heather is an artist and educator currently pursuing an MFA at the School of Visual Arts in New York. Her work is an investigation into social identity and what it means to expand beyond the limits placed either by society or even herself. She seeks to include the power of quiet as part of that identity in order to expand upon and include all aspects of what it means to be human by using a multidisciplinary approach. So Heather, what is the foundation of your thesis pro project or how did what you've created begin? Okay, so um, I'm gonna start um, by saying that, and I have notes because I don't wanna forget everything. everything. Um, I've been painting and sculpting for quite some time and, um, and teaching as, as well. And I started this journey in grad school thinking that um, you know, I just was coming to develop my, my skills in as, as an artist, um, to work on talking about my work better and mm -hmm. so on. And um, I had no uh, you know, inclination really to be doing anything that was, was political in any kind of way. Um, but I do believe that art is a way of, is a tool for telling stories and for self-expression. And what started happening is that, you know, there's, there were constant things that I found upsetting. And so in my first year, I remember being encouraged by um, my mentor, Basira Khan, to, um, to go beyond the canvas, right? And so um, if I could share my, my screen, I'm gonna show you um, one of my early works. Oh, that's not quite it. Take your time. going to work this time. So here it is. There you go. So she encouraged me to go beyond the canvas and said, you know what, I want to see, I said to her, I can't always, I can't get away from race necessarily. And she was like, you know what, I want to see that written on the wall. And, you know, me being a quiet, nice person was like right across the wall. Uh, I don't think so. But I sat, sat with it for a minute and um, I came up with this piece where I, I just literally say I can't, it can't always be about race, but I can't get away from it. Um, so that was one of my early pieces. And then um, another incident happened that 
was really upsetting to me, which involved a 16 year old res wrestler who was um, pretty much forced to make the choice of either cutting off his locks or forfeiting the match. And so you see this video, this was all across the news um, where they, the referee, you know, they're like shearing his hair in public, which I, I found to be, um, I felt that was a violent act. So I created an installation in response that I called um, Black Hair is Now Legal. Um, also re remember, you know, some people may know that, that recently they actually put in laws in New York um, stating that you cannot discriminate against a person based on the texture of their hair. So um, here is a picture of the installation that I created. So there's, you know, there's, there's three parts to it. We have the painting, the sculpture. I call my sculpture sculptures witnesses, which I will be talking further about. And then I had a video component to it. So I wanna share, this is, This is the um, one of the pieces of the installation, which is a painting where I actually use some of my my own locks, my own hair within the collage. Mm -hmm. And then I have. I'm just going to give you a close up of the witness sculpture that was included in the installation. Make that a little bit bigger. Yeah. You can see that on my screen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, and I call this sculpture, um, they just do whatever they want. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the first two years. Um, and I'm really cutting it short because that there was a lot more work done than than that, but those were some of the, the highlights for me. So, so the, so the high, so when you say that those were some of the highlights, like what was um, what would be just as important? You're sitting on you're sitting on a throne now, okay? So <laughs> take your time. Relax. What would be just as important? Um, I mean, I would say that I started out in my studio with everything, you know, nice and neat. I had all these cute little paintings and stuff. You know, um, my, my husband came in and said it was very polite, almost too polite. Um, and just stretching myself beyond Again, like stretching myself beyond the 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 canvas to think and and recognize that art is not just what you can see on the canvas or what you can you know or or a sculpture it's um I decided that I wanted to make installations as well, which was something that i had I had never done mm -hmm. um, which um you you'll see um, how far I've come as, as as far as the installations are are concerned, but but yeah, it, it really pushed me to think beyond um, just the making of the work and and to go even deeper into like why am I why am I doing this why am I doing this work why am I creating this why is this so important to me. Um, and I, I feel like my work starts on a personal level. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the hope is that by me sharing 
it opens up a window for others to share as well or right. to make their own connections because whatever I create, I might have my own connections to, to the work and another viewer who's coming with their own experiences, their own thoughts and beliefs will have a, another um, you know, idea or, or thought or meaning, bring their own meaning to the work. But that's where the, the dialogue can begin, which is something I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. So when I was going through some of your materials, uh, I came across a quote that you found very important to you or that you found interesting and it kind of resonated with your soul, if I can use that. Um, yeah. And it's by Amy Sherrell. Um, and it states, I want to show that there isn't one kind of Black identity. Um, one in, in an interview for Hauser and Worth, she stated, public Blackness has been culturally codified as something that is always attached to res resistance, which essentially, to me, limits our humanity and the ways that we can imagine ourselves existing. I often say that the paintings are a resting place for people to see a reflection of themselves that is not in resistance or contention. It's just a black person being a person. Yes, absolutely. Um, when I read that, it really spoke to me. And also in the article, she mentioned an author, an author by the name of Kevin Kwashi, who wrote a book called um, The Sovereignty of Quiet, Beyond Resistance in Black Culture. And so I picked up that book. And once I started reading, it really, it really spoke to me as a person who um, I identify myself as being a quiet person. Um, so then wanting to explore this idea of, you know, pushing that part of um, that element of my personality or my identity into the conversation, right? Um, so I have a quote here from that book where it says, resistance may be deeply resonant with Black culture and history but it is not sufficient for describing the totality of Black humanity, right? Um, and he, he also says that, ask the question, is it possible to engage the public in discourse of Black identity that is beyond the imperative of resistance? So, you know, I'm not saying that resistance is a negative thing. I think we need, we need that. We need to have that resistance um, to what is unjust, but it's not the only thing. It's not the only thing. And, you know, if you think of Black identity as just being about resistance, then it, it really is limiting. Um, so let me look, look at my notes quickly. And that, that's one part of my, my thesis research. I have like this three different parts of this. So one is exploring and um, exploring the idea of expanding the notion of black social identity. That's one thing. Um, another thing that was really important to me in my thesis writing is, um, finding other Black female artists who were um, developing their practice or working during my coming of age. Um, why? <laughs> the answer may or may not be obvious, but growing, growing up, um, there was never any Black female artists within my education. Um, although I can remember as a very, very young child, if you asked me what I wanted to be, I would have told you that I want to be an artist, right? But, um, 
you need to have examples of yourself. You need to be able to see yourself. Otherwise, it's like, oh, well, that's not for me. That's 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 for them. Only, you know, white males get to do and be this. And, you know, that wasn't necessarily true. It's just that that information, I call it, you know, hidden. So in my in my writing, I seek to find the hidden artists from, um, as I said, from my coming of age, from my upbringing. And I was, I was really happy and excited to find artists like Haradina Pandel, Pandel, Ellen, Gall Ellen Gallagher, um, please make sure I say her name correctly, Dinga. McCannon. Dinga McCannon. Um, I mean, there's, there's a whole- Faith Ringle, Kate Faith Brown. Ringle, Augusta Savage. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, these are people whose work I really, really ad admire. So, and, and it's kind of bittersweet to find this information now, right? So it's exciting to know about these things, but then it's like, but wow, if only I had had this information before, right? And um, so in, in my mind, there, there is a sense of loss of not having that. And because of that, I feel like part of my mission is um, to be that person, especially for you know young young girls, young black girls, to to see that um, there are many of us out there um, doing the work of an artist in in many different ways, right? Um, so yeah. Um, and you know, may I just add that um, many of you may not know that Heather is in uh, Brooklyn on My Mind, which is a book that I published. And it was important to me to help her gather her uh, work. And I remember when you transitioned into creating these sculptural pieces. Um, cause when I first met you, you were just basically painting publicly. I, I didn't, you know, there were a lot of folks, um, that I know didn't realize that you even created sculpture. And so, um, so I began to see the transition of your work. And, and so in having you in my book, which I feel is a blessing, you know, because my granddaughter now knows who Heather Williams is and Womack, Heather Williams Womack, right? And um, and then those children that will come into the next generation because it's documented. Yes. And so that so that's important. That's important. So you now have are carrying a torch. Um, and, and I I really thank you for that that opportunity because honestly when I first started to sculpt I didn't really take it seriously those pieces were um, this was before my kids were born a friend of mine invited me to take a class um, we had a teacher at the Educational Alliance and I remember his name was Paul Lucchese and I just fell in love with that class but I just was doing these sculptures and then I'll just leave them leave them in my basement. Wouldn't even patina them or anything. They just they just sat there until um one day uh, another artist friend of mine, his name is Ibu Ndoye, he came um to take a look at my work and he was like, I like your your paintings, but what's going on with your sculptures down there in the basement? I mean like they were just laying around in print. And then he invited me to exhibit um, the work as, at a spot in, in Hoboken. And from there, the, the response was mm -hmm. really amazing. It was really, yeah. really amazing. Um, yeah. So, and I, it's just something that I really, really love, love to do. So now I started creating these sculptures that I call um, witnesses that are these these faces, uh, much like the one that is hanging behind me, 
Um, and can leave it so we can can for a minute. Sure. So, you know, I, I I wrote down because again the question why why am I needing to keep doing this over and over again um, is more than just the joy of of creating the work, right? So I actually wrote down a list of of words like just free associating what is the witness and you know what is the significance of a witness so some of the words i have are to behold to notice to attend to observe um what are they observing in my mind the past the present maybe even the future um current events personal events i believe that Again, you know, each person comes with their own um, their own history, so they may see a witness and react to it a certain way, or it might conjure up certain feelings um, based on, you know, whatever where where you come from. So I I would not necessarily say oh that witness is about this or that this witness is about that necessarily. Um I like to kind of keep it open ended so so that each viewer can make their own connection to each piece. Nice, nice. Um when I when I think of your witnesses um I I I think of the safe passage um, and it's there's a connection because I mean it's almost like when when we were little girls someone was always looking over our shoulders no matter where we were to kind of be that protector symbol mm -hmm. um, would you say that your witnesses kind of take on that role like Yes, actually, one of um, the associations that I that I have, I guess I skipped over that somehow, is that that of the guardian angel. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll see in the next um, video that they do play um, a role in in the work, maybe as a guardian angel, maybe as a you know, someone who's watching, um, but you'll see when we when I show you that part. Um, are they all good? Are they are <laughs> they all good? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I had to think about them. <laughs> I had to think about them. They they might look angry. Some might look angry. Some might look complacent. Some may look um unwell mm -hmm. right um but it, you know it's, it's, i think for the viewer to to really take that to take mm -hmm. that in um so originally for my thesis project you know um i was planning to do more of a storytelling type of work with with women women of color and um you know have my my witnesses in um as i want to say containers right so i i just imagined this scenario where i had people um come in and and just tell their stories related to how they feel about what their relationship to quiet is um with the uh quiet witnesses in the background and then um then covid-19 hit and that changed everything of what I was thinking to do. So COVID-19 hit, then we had the uprisings, with, um, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, I mean, George Floyd, all of these, these things happened. And I started thinking more and more about safe space. And also through my research, I realized that it's not just about a safe space because a space seems more um, stagnant to me. Mm -hmm. 
what I'm talking about really is a safe way or a safe journey, mm -hmm. right? A safe journey for my for myself. As I said, I start with the personal, and um, but I believe it's a universal message that I'm talking about here. So I literally had to change everything around and think about, well, you know what? Maybe I'll just create this safe space in my backyard. I had no desire to, to build this thing myself, but um, I asked someone to come and, and, uh, and help me. They said yes, but then they didn't show up. And I had all the material in the backyard. And I said, you know what? Let me check out these YouTube videos and I will start the process of building this thing myself. Mm -hmm. So I build, hi, Emily. I'm, I'm, glad I, I, I'm glad Emily is saying hi to me because um, my classmates, I was calling them and trying to figure out how am I going to build these walls myself. Um, and <laughs> thank, thank you. So what, what I did was I ended up just putting all the walls together and, and the plywood and everything like in an afternoon. And then the next day I had help to put everything up. And so I built this structure, right? Um, thank you, Allison. I built this structure in the backyard and um, I think now's a good time to go ahead and, and show the outcome of the video that I put together. It's called Safe Passage and um, get comfortable and, and take it in. Let's make sure we're in the right place. Is there a safe passage for the black body?
Is there a safe passage for the black body? Thank you. <laughs> part wow. Part when he looks away, gets me every time. I know. Um, <laughs> there wow. is a raised hand. Um, okay, so guys, at this point, if you um, have questions or, or comments, you can um, put them in the in the chat for us. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can. All right, I'm gonna. Thank try. you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Yes, Phoenix. Phoenix was excellent. Um, for those of you who don't know, the the young man is um, my son, 
Phoenix, Phoenix Womack. Um, <laughs> thank you for the standing ovation. Oh, driven me to tears. I see the change when we show gaze. Thank you, guys. Guys, I'm just reading the the, um, the chat. Um, oh, so go back. Um, someone asked you a question that you just passed. There's one question here. Would you talk about how you right. make the witnesses? Are they based on people you know or from memory? Um, it is really very much an organic process. So I can, I mean, in terms of a, I, I can talk about the technical aspects of physically making them, um, where I, I have a, a particular mold, but yet every single one is, is unique and has its own. I just work on it until it, it feels right to me that it needs to, it doesn't need to be beautiful, but it needs to be conveying some type of feeling about something. Um, so I do spend a lot of time working on the eyes and the direction of the eyes, the, the mouth. Because I feel like those are the parts that really um, offer a lot of expression. Um, Hope that answers your question, but um, no, they're not. They're not based on people I know, or um, or from memory. They they really just it's like they're they're imperfect. They're not. Um, this particular group hasn't been been painted, and um, I like this analogy that one of my um, one of my teachers gave the other day. He said they have no makeup, so. You know, there, there is what you see is what you get. There is no, no makeup. They're, they're not perfect. They don't even necessarily have to be perfectly symmetrical or anything like that. They just need for me to convey that um, there's something behind those eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Someone, someone asks, do you feel a sense of release um, as an outcome of your work? Huh, good question. Do I feel a sense of relief? That's from Carla Mota. Hey, Carla. Um, that's a good question. I, um, on one level, I feel like I've accomplished something. Anytime that I come, especially as I'm com completing this piece, completing this this thesis, but the, the thesis is not really 100% complete because um, what I'm think the things I'm thinking about or, or talking about are, are like ongoing issues. Like, is there really a safe space for the black body, is there? You know, so and and how can we work towards making that happen? Right. So the the piece is more. It's not like a, a the end of something, but hopefully the beginning of a conversation. And and if not the beginning of a conversation, at least a way of of keeping a level of. Um, being alert and aware to to the situation at hand. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Sheila says, and there was one before Sheila. Can you go up a little bit? I don't have control. It wouldn't give me control. Right before Sheila Pe Pepe, we'll come back to Sheila. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, What's the connection between the sculpture's eyes and your son's eyes? Is there a connection? I did not 
necessarily think of that, but what I'm what I'm finding is that even as I look at the piece every time, there are levels of different of symbolism within the piece. Right? So um you have the witnesses within the installation, but maybe my son is a witness also in the installation. Maybe um, all of us who view this this piece become witnesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead with the questions because I, I, okay. I can go on about the symbolism and stuff. Yeah, can you move, can you, I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have- Oh, oh okay. Move up because yeah. it keeps rolling up every time someone types something. So I don't want to miss someone. So if you can go back up. Am I going in the right direction? Um, It's not yeah. moving yet. No? Okay. I don't see it moving. Tim has a question. Okay, above Sheila. Um, okay. Um, all right, we'll start with that. Is this through the American history um, and Augusta Savage or looking to Benin, et cetera? And I'm, I'm assuming uh, you're talking, Sheila. Are you talking about? I'm just. I'm, I'm helping Heather out. Are you talking? Are you asking if the witnesses are about Benin sculpture or Augusta Savage? Augusta Savage sculpture from a a, a, an, an American perspective meaning meaning is there a connection or I, I mean because I, I have I am aware of, of of both before I started doing my my writing um, I was looking at information on Benin sculpting and um, that came a little bit afterwards though I was already familiar with Augusta Augusta Savage um, and um, I think all of those things are influences. I don't know. It's interesting because, you know, many times as an artist, I, I just, I create the work. And like I said, it's an, it's an organic process, right? So certain things, they just feel right to me. And then after, the work is done, I might start looking at it again, like, oh, hey, this reminds me of, of this, or this remind, you know, you go back and you start looking at, at other things and finding research and, and um, see that there's different levels of, of meaning. Some things you didn't even realize, for example, um, in a group critique, Sheila brought up because in the beginning of the video, you can see um, there's fabric, right? You can see the edge of the fabric. The edge, that fabric is called, um, the edge of the fabric is called the salvage. And the purpose of the salvage is to keep things from fraying or falling or, or falling apart. So, I mean, one can come up with a ton of metaphors with regards to, to keeping things to be wanting to keep things together so that they're not you know falling apart creating this safe safe um safe passage so um i think i went off the rail a little bit i don't know so that question would you ever would you ever would you ever consider um creating uh works using similar techniques that the benin people used or uh, I mean I the connections for me between Augusta Savage sculpture that I that I am in love with and Benin sculpture 
um, would you ever bronze your pieces? Would you ever have them uh, created using the lost wax process? Um, or would you just, or, or, or would you keep them just the way they are um, in a very natural type of um, or for this group, organic for this group of, of, of witnesses, I will probably keep them as they are. Mm -hmm. and I like the, the idea of the, the raw, um, no makeup um, imagery. However, or maybe in a future body of work, or body of sculpture because I do like to try new things. I do like to experiment with other um, material, and I I I can see something like that in the in the future. But um, it's not necessarily where I'm going right mm -hmm. now. I wouldn't say no to it, but mm -hmm. it's not okay. Out. All right, um, Manny El Manny El Manny. Almani Vinny, did I say it right? Almani Vinny. Almani, I want to say it right. Almani um, says, I feel like his eyes represents the generations of us in the past. Absolutely. Because um, one of the things about the, the video is if you look at it again, you'll see that um, going through the fields, I I changed the coloring to make things look like past, going between past and, and present. And then even within the installation, um, I have fabric and material that represents water and what you're you're seeing it in, in one state. But if you were to actually go into that installation, you would see on a day like the fabric would be flowing back and forth. For me, um, that was important because I wanted it to feel like it's breathing. And also to um, the color of the fabric on the right, which is blue and, and white, represent to me like this movement of, um, of water. So I'm thinking about the middle passage. I'm thinking about breathing i am definitely thinking about generations in the past and and the, the witnesses are are part of that um representing generations of, of the past so yes almani you know when you were when you were talking about building the uh structure yourself um i thought about you as a mom and the whole nesting process um, right before you give birth um, and getting things in order and having the strength to lift a car even at nine months pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, was there any kind of um, sense of giving birth to something? Oh, I would definitely say yes. Cause I mean, I did say I, I had no desire to build this thing myself because I just felt like it was too much of an enormous feat to do something like that, that I've never done before. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I do love building. I do love do it yourself. I love, you know, working. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist. I love working with my hands. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up with a father who um, is a construction worker. And he, I always saw him creating things with his hands. I, and I always admired that. And so um, being able to build the structure myself kind of, kind of is reminiscent of watching my father do this type of work. Nice. Can I ask those who um, who wrote something earlier while we're covering the last few questions that I can see because they keep moving up? Um, can you just retype your questions? Um, Myra Cooley says you spoke about K 
can you bring uh, making connections with your art to the viewer and other artists? Are there specific ideas that you are hoping to communicate about protection of black bodies? Could the witnesses be thought of as ancestors? Yes, I think that's that's similar to um, what Almani was asking about. I mean, mentioning them representing generations um, past. Let me just read that question again. You spoke about the making of connections. Are there specific ideas that you are hoping to communicate about the protection of black bodies? Um, the protection of black bodies. I don't know if I have an answer to the protection of black bodies, but I do think that I can, that art can raise awareness to what it is like to be a, for example, I have to speak for myself, a black mother with this question about, is there really a safe place, right? And, and how can we think about um, moving toward that? I, and, and honestly, what, what really made me think strongly about this, I mean, these things have been happening for centuries, but what happened with Amon Arbery, just knowing that he was out jogging, he was just jogging and ended up dying um, because of the color of his skin. And that really struck me very deeply. So, you know, I gotta be able to send my kids out to the store. I gotta be able to let them go to school and, and do everyday, everyday things. So that's, I think that was really a, a strong, um, it was the impetus for me to, to try to create something that will at least keep the awareness up, right? Because I also think we have to, we have to stay aware. We have to keep um, these things in mind. Otherwise, you know, it's in, the, it's in the news one day and then it's not. But the issues are still, still happening and they're still really important. I saw something that had the word jazz in it. Can you see that question? Okay. Well, yeah, it says, it's Robin Winters. The work is very musical. The witnesses are like the chorus. Jazz has always provided form. Safety. Can you speak to that? Um, I don't know if I could speak to to that to that specifically. I have to say that you know I I when I was growing music definitely definitely was um, a huge and an important part of my upbringing. You know that's that's where I could feel my my culture even if I couldn't see myself on TV, right? Um, and it is part of my practice, whether I put it in, put it in or not. It's 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 what moves me um, to create. Um, I think that's the best I can answer your your, your question right now. Okay. <laughs> We're almost at time. Okay. Um, I I know we probably are not going to get to every question, right? But um, I I do know that um, everyone who is here will get a um, a follow up email that will allow for you know if you have further further questions. But let, let's see. Oh, 
But Joanne is asking me if this was a transformation process. It was a transformation process for me in the sense that I, um, I think I've ex expanded beyond what I thought I could do, even physically, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Someone spoke about somebody going to Pratt. Did anybody from in your family go to Pratt? My mother? I, I went to Pratt. Oh. I went to Pratt and studied. Um, Art therapy. Oh, Sheila. <laughs> I went to Pratt too. <laughs> oh. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, in another lifetime, I um, went to grad school at Pratt Institute and studied art therapy. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Hey. Um, so let's just. I guess, and Roxy went to Pratt on, on with Lisa and saying, we're so proud of you, Heather. We love you. That's right. <laughs> yes, we love you. Okay. Um, yes, guys, I, I really want to say thank you so, so much. I am deeply appreciative of everyone who took the time to join me this evening. Um, yes, I have a list of people to, to thank. I don't, um, but I don't want to leave <laughs> any, anyone out. Thank you to my co cohorts. Um, thank you, my teachers at, at, at SVA. Um, Beth DeCara, who helped me to, to get those sculptures fired. Um, oh my goodness. There's, there's a long list, uh, but but again, if you have further questions, there will be a follow up email after this that you can um, go ahead and, and ask. Also, I'm thinking um, you may see for my next project. I'm I'm considering working on um, doing more work with the with the witnesses because I believe that that can be a separate body of work. And um, I will send out information to, to all of you um, with, regards, with regards to that. Um, otherwise, you can check out my website, heathermwilliams.com. Um, Dr. Myra Brown Green, you want to um, give your social media information? Um, I, you know, I don't remember. I, I only remember. Uh, MyraBrownGreen.com, <laughs> and you know, write your write your in your website in the chat, Heather. Okay. And Myra's with an H. MyraBrownGreen.com. Okay, so that's. Heather. And if you have, if you don't have a copy of Brooklyn on My Mind, you need to get a copy of it it's, to see yeah. Heather's work, so you can. Those two beautiful pieces, they're, they're just, it's almost like they're floating. They're just two of my favorite pieces. And she's in the book with, with, with so many great black artists, which is amazing. So you can see the transition and she's carrying the torch. I mean, she's actually in that chapter um, as she's a torch bearer. Oh, thank you. Um, okay, guys. Thank you so much. Um, have a good night. Thank you, Dr. Myra Brown. Oh, my pleasure. Um, I'm proud. My classmates, I'll see you soon. <sighs> Love you all. Have a good night. <laughs>